Mary, the mother of revolutions. No, it is super windy outside, so you might hear that. In the TV show Doctor Who, they frequently mention perception filters, which disguise something that otherwise would be in plain sight. It doesn't necessarily make the object disappear, but the filter makes it unnoticeable. In a similar way, when I look through passages in the Bible, ones I have read or heard a million times, especially growing up as evangelical slash Pentecostal, it feels as if a perception filter has been destroyed and I can now finally experience the Bible in its fullness. Luke one forty six to fifty five is one example of a passage that it feels as if there was a perception filter on it when I was a kid. Growing up, we learned about Mary. We read this passage, but she was primarily ignored. She was an example of someone who obeyed God even when asked to participate in the impossible. But other than that, she was ignored. But there's more to her story. This passage demonstrates that she pointed to and worshipped a God who sided with the marginalized and the oppressed. Yes, she birthed and physically cared for Jesus, the Son of God. But I can also imagine that she taught Jesus what it meant to be the Son of God. Her song praising God in Luke is a song that not only expresses her wonder in God, but it is a song of revolution. Maybe Jesus was born recognizing and embracing who he was, but most likely he had to be taught and nurtured into his identity as the Son of God. And his first teacher would have been Mary. I imagine she taught Jesus about the God who rejected the status quo, who looked at disgust at the powerful whose wealth and status were gained at the expense of the marginalized and poor. Mary's obedience to God was not one of quiet, quiet acceptance. It was an obedience built on protest and power.